Hello, my name is Justin Curry. This is for the course CNT 6519 here at UCF Wireless and Mobile Forensics. Today, I'm going to show you how to perform a simple forensics examination of an Android smartphone using Celebrite and a portion of the Oxygen Forensics Suite. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to show you a few Android smartphone forensics facts. I'm going to show you how to work around Celebrate UFED Physical Analyzer, show you the limitations of the tool. I'm going to show you some other tools that I'm going to use to validate some of the timestamps. And as anybody that does any type of forensics, digital forensics, you know that although, yes, you can use these tools to assist you with the, within the actual examination you do need to be able to validate the timestamps and because the fact of the matter is that if your timestamps do not align up and you try to take this to court more likely your case will not stand and then I will show you the references where I found the software where you can download them yourself and register for each one of them the Android smartphone forensics device um, basically, Android smartphones use the Linux-based operating system. Um, this varies depending on the different vendor that you have. Um, you have millions, uh, not really millions, but thousands of different vendors, different types of phones that are out there makes and models. It runs off the YAFS2 file system, which uses SQLite databases. And within those databases, the timestamps that I'm going to be showing you throughout the presentation is going to be using Unix Epoch milliseconds, and that's going to be in little Indian format. Here are some of the locations of what I believe will be the most valuable databases that most forensics examiners will be using in any type of investigation. So you have the accounts. Um, you also have the browser database, you have the contacts, you have the email provider database, which is showing the emails, and the MMS, SMS database, which is self-explanatory, which is most likely your text messages. And then you have your calendar database, which shows basically anything that you the user has used in the calendar. Before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the Celebrite UFED Physical Analyzer. First, let me start off by saying this software for the free version is great. Um, the most difficult part about it is actually getting a license key. I know by personal experience, it took me two different computers and it also took me about almost a week and a half to almost two weeks to get this software to work. Um, unfortunately, they tie the license directly to the one computer, so you're not you have to re-register if it doesn't work properly. In my case, they accidentally gave me the wrong license, so I end up having to use another device, which I'm glad that happened because the device that I was going to put it on ended up crashing on me in the middle of the semester while I had the rest of this um, this this 30-day uh, trial that I had for it. The only limitation that I'm not liking about the free version of the Celebrite UFED Physical Analyzer is the fact that, due to the fact that I'm trying to do Android forensics, it does not do physical data directly from the Android. You cannot just plug it in. You can only use um, iOS devices. So what you end up having to do is you have to use a third-party software such as FTK Imager, Incase Imager, or WinHex, and you have to have root access to the Android phone and you have to make a DD raw image file and then Celebrite will then be able to go ahead and decode the information and reconstruct the file system so that you can go ahead and do your analysis but for me I did not have a phone that I could just go ahead and root which would have voided my warranty so I opted to use the image that they automatically give you when you download the software I believe that the four images that they provided us was the iPhone they had two images for iPhone they had an Android image a TomTom -tom image and a Blackberry image 
The tools that will be used during throughout this project and demo will be the Cellbrite UFET Physical Analyzer, which I'll show you how to um, work within that with the Android phone image that was provided by the vendor. I'm going to use the SQLite browser so that I can actually browse throughout the database and pull the different timestamps that I want to show to validate. We're going to use the decode program, which is very well known throughout the forensics world. This, the, this tool is used to go ahead and translate and convert the phone language into human readable con content. And I'm also going to use a data extraction that I was able to pull from my Oxygen Forensic Suite 2014. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show that tool in this presentation because the device that I actually had my license with actually crashed about a week ago. So fortunately, I was able to go ahead and extract the databases away from that. The good thing about that is I was actually able to pull some personal data from my personal phone. So I'm going to probably be showing you my calendar database from there so that I don't get too intrusive on myself and showing you too much uh, personal data. All right, here is the youth, Celebrate Youth Fed Physical Analyzer. I'm going to go ahead and open the Android YAS uh, raw data file within it. All right, as you can see, you have no data. So the first thing we're going to do, as I stated before, the Android phone system does use the YAS2 file system. So we got to run a plugin. And the plugin that we're going to use is going to be the YAS2 plugin. This plugin, depending on the speed of your computer, can take up to 5 minutes, 10 minutes, even 15 minutes. For me, it only takes about a minute or so. Now that the file system has been reconstructed, you need to go ahead and run the next plugin which is the Android databases plugin. This will go ahead and decode all of the databases, which will allow you to actually see the data that you need to see in order to perform your forensics examination on your Android phone system. Now this as well can take up to a couple minutes or it can take up to 30 minutes. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and now that the file system has been reconstructed and the databases have been decoded, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the databases. The first database that I'm going to want to show you is the accounts database. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this. We're going to go to file. We're going to right click on the, the account database and we're going to save it as. We're just going to save it to the desktop just for um, for this demonstration, I'm going to be saving all my databases to the desktop so that it's very easy for me to find. As you see, it already says you want to place it because I've been practicing this, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And then we're going to go ahead and open up the SQL Lite database. I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to go to accounts. Open that. I want to go to accounts, and as you can see, you can see that there's two different accounts that are already on here. It looks like this is an encrypted set of the password, which obviously you're not going to be able to get because it is the Gmail and their encryption. So the next step that I'm going to show you is the browser database. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to right click on that, go to file. Gonna take me to that actual file. We're gonna save it to the desktop again. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this SQLite browser again. Open up this database. And for this one, we're gonna actually use the bookmarks. You can see here goes all their bookmarks. Now the one that we're going to focus on for this demonstration is 
looks like he actually went to a Facebook page of one of his friends. Looks like Katarina Lau. And as you can see on this screen that they have a date column. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the date column. We're going to highlight the 13 character code. And we're going to open up the decode program. We're going to make sure that it's Unix millisecond value. We're going to paste that in here. You're going to decode it. Now, according to this decode, he, he visited this site on May 10, 2011. Let's see if that's true. I'll go here. There is the Katarina Lau profile. And let me pull up decode to see if they line up together. Got May 10th, 82752. This is 202752, which is military time, which is the correct time. And as you can see, it is UTC. So this time does line up together. The next database that I want to go ahead and show you. Is the email provider database so we're going to go ahead and right click on this go to file we're going to save it to the desktop again I'm going to use this SQLite browser to open this up I'll go to the email provider database We're going to go to message. As you can see, you can see what the subjects are. If you go down here, you can see one, some of the timestamps. So we'll use this one. We'll place it into decode. We said this one is how is Atlanta? So we got May 10th, 2011, 1124. Let's go to the emails. And here's your email. Actually, you can see that there's two emails. But you can clear state that see that it has the timestamp, it has where the source is, the Gmail account. And if you scroll down, you actually see the body of the actual message. And the last database that I'm going to show you within the Celebrite tool is the MMS SMS database. So we're gonna right click on this, go to file. We're gonna save the file. Save it to our desktop again, again, replace it because I already had a copy there. Scroll down to this database. For this one, we're going to use the threads. And as you can see right here, you can actually see a little bit of the message. Telling you exactly what, what's in the message before you even go to open it. And this, of course, is for the text. And sometimes it's even for email. And it's also for picture text as well. 
So as we see, you have the you have insufficient funds to send message. So we want to val validate this timestamp. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Open up decode again. Put that in here. Looks like we have May 10th, 2011 at 8.43. So let's go over here. Go to our SMS messages. Looks like we had the you have insufficient funds to send message. And let's pull up decode to make sure that these two timestamps are correct. And they do. They line correctly, properly up. The last database that I'm going to show you is the calendar database. This is actually from my personal phone that I use from day to day. Um, I'm going to go ahead. This was this data extraction was actually created from Oxygen Forensics tool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up this extraction. As you can see, the date and time of his last modification was March 13th. So I did this a while ago. This is when I was learning this tool. It's my tool one. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. I'm just going to type in calendar. All right. There goes the database. I'm going to go ahead and open this. I'm going to use the task reminders. All right. So as you can see, I have a pay sprint bill by America, Bank of America stocks at 930. I like to buy stocks all the time. And then also, I think this one will be most beneficial or will relate best to this demonstration, seeing that I'm doing a presentation for the UCF course, is for me to pay my UCF tuition fee deadline. So it looks like I have my reminder time. So that was around January. Well, it wasn't around. It was on January 17th, 2014. And then let's see when the due time was. The due date. It looks like the due date was on January 17, 2014. And to validate that that due date is correct, I'm going to go ahead and go to ucf.edu go to academics academic calendar We can find the deadline. And as you see right here, January 17th was the payment deadline. So that validates exactly what I was doing. The timestamp wasn't a bogus timestamp. So overall, you see that. When I started this course, basically, I felt that the Android phone system was going to be much more difficult because I've never had a course that actually told me anything about the Android phone system at all. All we have been doing throughout this program is using Windows and Linux. So for me, this was a, a very um, quickly learning curve. I thought it was pretty neat to see that although the operating systems are much different, you still can use some of the same tools to validate the information that you're that you're getting from these different tools. Here's my references sheet for this demonstration. I mainly use the Android Forensic Investigation Analysis and Mobile Security for Google Android by Andrew Hu. This book, without this book, honestly, I probably wouldn't have learned as much. I, I mean, I found some white papers here and there, some articles throughout the internet but this book 
by itself has taught me so much. I don't think I actually needed any other documentation to help me learn how the Android file system works, how the operating system works, and where different and very essential, important files are located and databases are located. Um, of course, for the demonstration, I use SQL, SQLite. You can get that from Source for Forge for free. You have the decode program, which translated the data into readable format for humans to be able to, you know, get some meaning out of it. Then you have the Subbrite UFED physical analyzer. As you can see, it says that it's a 30-day uh, trial. If you're going to use this for Android, remember you're going to need to have root analysis or root access to the phone in order to pull the actual data from your personal device. Or you can just go ahead and use the demo version or the sample version that they gave you with the download. The Oxygen Forensic Suite 2014, it was a pretty nice tool. It's just the fact that it was very limited within its use. Even though, yes, I was able to plug my phone up to it, that's about the only thing that I actually liked about it. But as far as the data that it provided you, it did not give you the important uh, the important databases such as like the Context 2 or the MMS SMS database, those types of things. The only one that I was actually able to pull from there was my calendar. So that is why I only got to show you that. But all in all, this was a very good experience for me. I've learned the Android phone system much better. I plan on continuing to keep learning more about this because with you getting into the field, you're gonna to need to be very diverse, not just in Windows, but you also need to know other phone systems such as you know the Android, Blackberry, iPhone, etc. And this is my conclusion to the, my demonstration.